Hare Krishna, everyone. I haven't prepared for this. <laughs> I'm life not very good speaker. Life of I'm preparation. Sorry. Yes. There's no such thing as being prepared. Um, I've State. been trying to be in Krishna consciousness for five years, but this is the first time I'm uh, presented at Srila Prabhupada's appearance day, and I'm very happy that I was able to make it. Thank you for my husband and to Srila Prabhupada, of course. Um, I just really feel that I don't deserve um, to be in your association and pray for... Um, I, I really want to be attached more to all of you, to devotees, to Srila Prabhupada, more than to things that I've done before. And I feel very, very, very thankful. And I feel how not only I progress, but all of my family progress as I try to practice Krishna consciousness. So I feel very, very um, thankful to Srila Prabhupada for bring, bringing this knowledge into my life. Thank you. Hare Krishna, please accept our obeisances. Um, Hold it close. <laughs> I'm really grateful for Srila Prabhupada for giving this um, community, to giving this family that accepts me so much. And um, I always feel so fallen, but. but um, that I don't really even understand his books. Uh, we try to read, but I still don't understand, to be honest. But oh, through association with devotees and through lectures, I feel that something <laughs> might be getting <laughs> inside. And, and I'm really thankful for Srila Prabhupada for giving um, for giving this way to purify my heart, uh, I feel that even though there is so much that to be, there is the the spiritual way, the spiritual life is so much far away from me. But just because I'm in association, my heart gets cleaned. But then again, it's so dirty. But um, very, very thankful for, for all of you, for all devotees, uh, for accepting the little that we do, the little that I do. So thank you so much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hi everyone, Hare Krishna. Mm, I don't know how I'm here, <laughs> to be honest, because I'm <laughs> it's very, very new for me, and I just started like uh, reading Japa a little bit and reading some books <laughs> very, very recently, and every time I come visit my sister here in San Francisco. It's uh, something new opens for me. So, for example, last time I came, it was Mother's Day, and um, things happened, like we talked, and um, I decided, oh, I will start reading Japa as well. And this time today, I come here. I honestly didn't even try to come in the morning, to be honest, because uh, yesterday I went to Berkeley um, Temple, and. I was a little bit tired, and I didn't think, oh, but things happened, so I'm here as well, because it was like, in inside me, something was like, oh, you probably should go, because you're here for another few days, and you're not losing anything, like, you don't have work tomorrow, so I came, and now I'm sitting here, which I don't think I even... Uh, <laughs> Because I, I listen to other people saying, and for me, it's 
something very new and and I don't know, sometimes I feel like I don't even deserve to sit here right now, but thank you everyone, thank you um, for um, actually accepting everyone and uh, making this um, feel like I'm home because I don't feel like I'm a stranger whenever I come here and thank you everyone for for loving everyone. So. Um, yeah, and I'm really sorry we get emotional when we um, have to speak for the first time and for such a big event. Um, thank you so much and thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, His Grace Satyadev Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. I offer my respectful obeisances to my spiritual master, Abhaya Charan, Bhaktivedanta Swami, uh, Srila Prabhupada. He is very dear to Lord Krishna on this earth, and he is also the divine servant of the exalted spiritual master. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada has come uh, to distribute the message of Lord Chaitanya all over the world. And he is smashing impersonalism and voidism, especially in this one here. <laughs> uh, for my respectful obeisances to my mentor, uh, Vaisheshika Prabhu, the gravity of your faith and dedication to Srila Prabhupada uh, pulls me and keeps me uh, close to him. Otherwise, I would just be uh, some asteroid <laughs> floating around in the universe aimlessly. And I offer my respectful obeisances to all my God brothers and God sisters who also, uh, your faith and dedication have, have kept me. Uh, actually, today, uh, my offering to Srila Prabhupada is a question of, well, I'm not sure who's more important, but I'll get to that in a minute. And I offer my respectful obeisances, and I take the dust of your feet to all the assembled Vaishnavas here, who also keep me uh, circling the planet of Srila Prabhupada. Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept my most humble obeisances at your lotus feet. I was born in the darkness of ignorance and out of your boundless compassion you have opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. You have revealed to me my true self and my eternal relationship with the Lord of the heart, Sri Krishna. Honestly speaking, I cannot say to whom I feel more grateful, to you or to Krishna. 
By the mercy of the spiritual master, one receives the benediction of Krishna. Without the grace of the spiritual master, one cannot make any spiritual advancement. Therefore, I should always remember and praise the spiritual master at least three times a day, and I should offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master. Another verse. According to their karma, all living entities are wandering throughout the universe. Some of them are being elevated to the upper planetary systems, and some are going down into the lower planetary systems. Out of many millions of wandering living entities, one who is very fortunate gets an opportunity to associate with a bona fide spiritual master by the grace of Krishna. You see my dilemma here. <laughs> by the mercy of both Krishna and the spiritual master, such a person receives the seed of the creeper of devotional service. And this was spoken by Lord Chaitanya to Sanatana Goswami. A few months before I had the good fortune to personally meet you. This is, I was traveling uh, to Japan. Uh, I was 19 and I, I was a wandering asteroid and uh, I was feeling I was praying to the Lord, something's going to happen. Anyway, actually. Oh, I messed up here. A few months before I had the good fortune to personally meet you, I feverishly play, prayed to the Lord. I was aboard an airplane traveling from San Francisco to Tokyo, Japan. As I gazed out the plane window at 36,000 feet, watching the clouds go by, I earnestly began to pray to God. I had no clear conception of God. I felt helpless. I felt obsessed. And so, desperately, I wanted to know God. In fact, looking back now, I would say my prayer was more of a demand than a humble request. I wanted God to reveal himself to me and to show me the way to him. Amazingly, not long after I made the prayer to God, feeling utterly lost, the Lord of my heart fulfilled my heart's desire. I remember the day we met like it was yesterday even though 48 years ago have passed, 48 years have passed, your body had a golden effulgence. Your smile radiated unconditional love. Your affect, your affect conveyed deep peace, born of inner confidence. I just knew it. You were the answer to the beggar prayer I made that day I was flying over the Pacific Ocean. You were the one sent by God to me who could truly show me the way home. I had no doubt that God himself had gifted you to me. Of course, one could argue that I am just being a bit sentimental and perhaps that was true then and even now. However, I did get more than I originally bargained for. <laughs> you taught me that God is indeed an unlimited person, which you proved through Vedic philosophy, scientific logic, and the forceful words of your own experience, that God is indeed sentient. You saved me and countless others in the past, in the present, and for years to come in the future, from the hellish impersonal calamity. For this alone, I am an eternal debitor to you. 
You taught by your own example that the way to God is not cheap. Only unalloyed surrender to the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna can induce the Lord to reveal himself, for the Lord is known as Swatantra, the only fully independent person. You rightly said, without compromise, that in order to awaken from the dream of Maya, from the dream of separation from the Lord, one must begin with the construction of a firm moral foundation. OMG, oh my God. <laughs> Which were the four regulated principles? It was shocking for me to hear that in order to become your disciple, one must give up illicit sex, meat eating, intoxication, and mental speculation. Although such restrictions seemed impossible to me at the time, these four pillars of morality made sense. My faith in you as a true representative of God became more fixed. Besides giving me the do's and the do nots of spiritual life, specifically chanting the holy names of God as taught by Godhead himself, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you enthusiastically proclaimed, chant and be happy. But there was a caveat. Chant consciously and avoid the ten offenses in chanting. Don't hold back. In Krishna's conclusion to his instructions to Arjuna, he said, one must fully surrender to him. In this connection, your spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada, once told the story of the newlyweds. The newlyweds had to travel at night by boat, and it was already dark. And when they boarded the boat, uh, the boatman began to row. He rowed all night, but when the couple awoke in the morning, they were surprised to find that they were still in the same place on the river. They had not made any progress. Then they discovered the reason for their lack of progress. The boatman had forgot to lift the anchor. He rowed all night, but they didn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh no. Oh, what did I do? Krishna. Sorry. Okay. If we remain attached to this material world, and the false conception of ourself as existing independent of Krishna, it is like keeping an anchor that weighs us down in the ocean of Maya. If we continue to maintain our material attachment, which means if we do not make a conscious decision to let go of our conditioned ways of thinking, feeling, and behaving, we will stay put, even though we're chanting the Maha Mantra. Without pulling up the anchor, by facing the inner negativity our minds generate based on the false belief about ourself, we may chant, but we may not be consistently happy. The same people and same situation that cause us to feel aggravated, unfulfilled, and worried in the past will continue to bother us now and in the future, especially in the time, at the time of death. Change can only come about now. If not now, then when? Srila Prabhupada, in you, Krishna gave me the most authentic, pure devotee teacher possible. Dhruva Maharaj sincerely wanted to know God, and the Lord of the Heart gave him Narada Muni to show him the way. 
Prabhupada, I declare without hesitation that you are equal to the great sage Narada Muni. You are my Narada Muni, my savior. When I think of you, I cannot help but remember Krishna. And when I think of Krishna, I cannot help but remember you. You and Krishna are inseparable. Although incapable and unqualified, I beg to serve you and your servants in any capacity that you choose for me, life after life, with affection, your servant, moi. <laughs> It's great set you day for Boo Kijai. Shila Prabhupada Kijai. Go Bhakti Vrinda Kijai. Go Pray Manande Hari Hari Bo. I think we're getting close to the um, time, which is uh, 12 o'clock. We'll, we'll be having a uh, Pushpanjali and Artik for Shila Prabhupada, a Guru Puja. Um, devotees have been cooking for the last uh, couple days for Prabhupada and they've made an offering uh, to Srila Prabhupada. It's a very special kind of offering because the devotees uh, who are working on uh, the feast, uh, all loving de devotees, disciples of Srila Prabhupada, uh, knew the kinds of preparations that he was especially fond of and uh, made those preparations and often. So it, it's a special feast every year here for Srila Prabhupada's appearance day when these uh, senior devotees come together with uh, such uh, meditation on pleasing Srila Prabhupada through their cooking. We find it's one of the main themes throughout the Sri Sh Sh Chaitanya Charitamrita that the devotees would take such care to cook for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, there are vivid and detailed descriptions of all the preparations that they would offer. Which is kind of touching if you think about the process of bhakti and how much of it is related to cooking and honoring what's been cooked by others. It's such an intrinsic part of our lives and it just makes so much sense for, for a living being to appreciate those who are um, consciously cooking for them. And then the acceptance of that, so it was. It was one of the um, ways that Prabhupada changed the world. He he taught what I don't think I've heard any other kind of uh, teacher, spiritual teacher, coming and revolutionizing cooking, <laughs> and personally showing how to cook, and also uh, showing how to honor what's been given the prasad. And Prabhupada taught that, and it's one of the verses we sing each day, Chatur Vita um, Sri Bhagavat Prasada, Swadhana Triptan Hari Bhakta Sangan, Kritvaiva Triptin Pajatak Sadaiva, Vande Guru Sri Charanara Vindam. The Srila Prabhupada, uh, we're, we're glorifying the Guru, that the Guru is so happy to see the, the devotees taking Bhagavat Prasad. In fact, Satyadev Prabhu told me a story about when he first joined in, in Japan that he was at a vantage point in the temple when Prabhupada went in to peek and see how the devotees were nicely taking prasadam. And uh, Satyadev Prabhu happened to have the vantage point to be able to see Prabhupada kind of sneak over and look in and relish the fact that the, the devotees were sitting together honoring prasadam. Fact, that's true. See, and and this tradition goes on that the the devotees here, out of love for Prabhupada, and I see it when they get together to cook this feast, how much uh, it brings them to that loving feeling of serving Prabhupada together to cook for him. So it's one of the great contributions Prabhupada made to the world, teaching about prasadam how to honor prasadam, how to give prasadam, how to cook prasadam. Otherwise, who would know these things? And this has been a grand festival, I must say, over the last couple of days. The um, 
devotees extended themselves in so many different ways to bring this Janmashtami to the crescendo that was last night at 12 midnight. And I was thinking back to what we read earlier about the meaning of Vyasa Puja, and there was a recount, actually, of how Prabhupada first introduced Vyasa Puja and its importance. How does one do that to, to begin with? You have to <laughs> very clearly know that you're a conduit when you're saying you worship the spiritual master. And then uh, the incident in Japan where the devotees hadn't got the word yet or didn't imbibe it properly, how to observe Vyasa Puja. And when Prabhupada said, where are the flowers? Uh, he asked for pushpa and they bought pushpana rice. And Prabhupada became angry. So f from those days uh, and the, all the ways in which Prabhupada planted seeds for various festivals and etiquettes, he, uh, we can see now that uh, through the kinds of means he set up so that we could learn all these things through his books, through his teachings, through the association of devotees, there's uh, been a, he's created a very high standard. So Jan Mashtami was a grand ceremony yesterday, and Vyasa Puja too has become a, an institution in this con where devotees come together to glorify him. And also noticeable is that uh, the disciples, the Diksha disciples of Prabhupada are getting older and fewer <laughs> by attrition. Uh, and now, when we hear from the uh, devotees who are grand disciples or grand grand disciples, that we're hearing the same nectar and relishing, and sometimes I dare say even more, uh, to see how the same current is coming through and uh, reaching the, the devotees. My only regret is uh, that I couldn't call on everybody. I do uh, call on devotees selectively just to try to have, uh, I don't know, it's very spontaneous, I'm not going to get into the reasons, but um, always be ready in any case, you should know that. So congratulations to everyone for enacting such a, a, a wonderful festival together. That's our offering to Srila Prabhupada the day before his appearance day, and all of you for joining today and everyone who's joined online to celebrate this day. Anyone who does celebrate such a day will uh, become elevated by observing the Vyasa Puja of Srila Prabhupada, the great Acharya and uh, pure devotee of the Lord. I um, wrote an offering for Srila Prabhupada on behalf of everyone at ISV, and if, with your permission, I'll just read that now. This is Iskon of Silicon Valley. <laughs> Dear Srila Prabhupada, we offer you our respectful obeisances, all glories to your divine grace. In the light of the Bhagavata, at verse 43, you write, we should not consider going back to Godhead a plaything. We must take it seriously as enjoined in the scriptures. In modern society, most people are regularly exposed to degrading influences and are sidetracked by a host of whimsical distractions. Practically, therefore, out of billions of people in the world, very few take to any serious spiritual practice what to speak of adopting going back to Godhead as their ultimate goal. In general, says the Srimad Bhagavatam, in Kali Yuga, People have short lives, they're quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. Srila Prabhupada, you started ISKCON not only to give such people sanctified places where they can find refuge in a spiritual atmosphere, but also to give bona fide systematic practices by which anyone can reach the goal of human life by going back to Godhead. These are invaluable gifts which we at ISV are striving to take seriously. Among numerous practices that you've advised us to take seriously, here are four that are foundational. One, reading your books. Two, strictly following the four regulative principles. Three, 
avoiding the ten offenses to the holy name, and four, spreading the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. Regarding reading your books, this seems a daunting task. Nonetheless, it is one that every serious follower of yours must embrace. At Madhya Leela 25.279 of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, you make this fact crystal clear. All the devotees connected with the Krishna consciousness movement must read all the books that have been translated, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and others. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep, and fall down from their position. Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal, blissful life of transcendental pleasure. Unquote. At first glance, reading all your books may seem an insurmountable challenge. However, by methodically reading a fixed number of pages each day, devotees find that they are able to complete all 18 volumes of the Srimad Bhagavatam, all nine volumes of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, the entire Bhagavad Gita as it is, the nectar devotion, the nectar of instruction, and so on. In the process, they are becoming fixed in devotional service. Intelligent humans venerate books and depend upon them not only for solace and entertainment, but also for getting needed direction in their lives. As Thomas Carlyle wrote, what we become depends on what we read after all the professors have finished with us. The greatest university of all is the collection of books. Similarly, we find that although you are physically no longer with us, through your books we can have your intimate association and receive unlimited instruction from you. In fact, the collection of your books contains all the essential knowledge a human needs to attain the goal of life. After all, the original purpose of forming universities was to bring together the most influential and important knowledge available in the world so that people might take advantage of it and thrive. You have done this by leaving us your books, which turn each home in which they reside into a university. In emphasizing the reading of your books, you follow the mood and method of our Acharyas, such as Krishidas Kaviraj Goswami, who writes in Madhya Lila 1.34 in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Goswamis carried out the preaching work of devotional service on the base of an analytical basis of an analytical study of all confidential Vedic literatures. This was in compliance with the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thus, one can understand the most confidential devotional service of Vrindavan. Srila Prabhupada, in your purport to this verse, you write. This proves that bona fide devotional service is based on the conclusions of the Vedic literatures. We therefore pray to remain fixed in the serious practice of reading all your books again and again as you have advised. Regarding following the four regulative principles, in a letter dated July 16, 1969, you tell Brahmananda Das that those who are truly serious will follow the four regulative principles. Quote, regarding your plan for advertising membership in BTG, that is nice. I do not see how we can insist that all members must follow the four regulative principles, but this is certainly our recommendation to anyone who is serious about pursuing Krishna consciousness. In your purport to Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 19156, you further highlight the importance of following the order of the spiritual master by remaining faithful in adhering to the regulative principles. If one thinks that he has become very mature and can live separate from the association of Vaishnavas and thus gives up all the regulative principles due to offending a Vaishnav, one's position becomes very dangerous. Offenses against the holy name are explained in Adi Lila, chapter 8, verse 24. Giving up the regulative principles and living according to one's whims is compared to a mad elephant, which by force uproots the bhakti lata and breaks it to pieces. In this way, the bhakti lata shrivels up. Such an offense is especially created when one disobeys the instructions of the spiritual master. 
This is called Guru Avagya. The devotee must therefore be very careful not to commit offenses against the spiritual master by disobeying his instructions. As soon as one is deviated from the instructions of the spiritual master, the uprooting of the bhakti lata begins, and gradually all the leaves dry up. People are serious about many things in the, material, in the modern world, sports teams, developing their physiques, plumping their bank accounts, but only a rare few are serious about abstaining from illicit sex, meat-eating, gambling, and intoxication. We pray to remain fixed in the serious practice of following the four regulative principles as advised by you. Regarding avoiding the ten offenses and chanting the Maha Mantra, in a letter to Govardhan Das dated March 6, 1970, you wrote, Chant regularly 16 rounds of beads daily without fail, avoiding the ten offenses to the holy name of Krishna. This will make you intelligent to understand our philosophy, and you will automatically acquire all auspicious qualities by always being engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. In other words, one must both chant Hare Krishna and avoid the ten offenses. One who upholds both of these instructions is known as a serious practitioner. You confirm this idea at Madhya Lila 12.135 in Sri Chaitanya Charnamrita, where you similarly state that while practicing the chanting of Hare Krishna, we must also keep our hearts as clean as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept the Gudicha temple. Quote, if a devotee at all wants to cleanse his heart, he must chant and hear the glories of the Lord Sri Krishna, Srinvatam Swakata Krishna. This is a simple process. Krishna himself will help cleanse the heart because he is already seated there. Krishna wants to continue living within the heart and the Lord wants to give directions. But one has to keep his heart as clean as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept the Gundicha temple. Srila Prabhupada, we pray to remain fixed in the serious practice of avoiding the ten offenses against the holy name as advised by you. If you agree with that, say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Spreading the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. Finally, you consistently define a, define a serious and advanced devotee as one who is absorbed both mentally and physically in spreading the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. This definition becomes apparent in your purport at Antyalila 3.52 in Sri Chaitanya Charamrita. Quote, well, when the Lord is unhappy because of the condition of the fallen souls, the devotee consoles him saying, my dear Lord, do not be in anxiety. This is service. Everyone should adopt the cause of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to try to relieve him from the anxiety he feels. This is actually service to the Lord. One who tries to relieve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's anxiety for the fallen souls is certainly a most dear and confidential devotee of the Lord. In another example, at verse 5 in Nectar of Instruction, you describe Uttama Adhikaris as those who are always thinking about how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. Quote, Out of many such initiated Vaishnavas rendering devotional service, one may be found to be very seriously engaged in the service of the Lord and strictly following all the regulative principles, chanting the prescribed number of rounds on japa beads, and always thinking of how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. Such a Vaishnav should be accepted as an Uttama Adhikari, a highly advanced devotee, and his association should always be sought. What's more, at verse 24 in teachings of Lord Kapila, you designate those who preach Krishna consciousness as, quote, superior sadhus, unquote. Those who are preachers are superior to those who go to the Himalaya to meditate. It is good to go to the Himalayas to meditate for one's personal benefit, but those who undergo many difficulties in order to preach are superior. They are actually fighting for Krishna's sake, and they are certainly more compassionate. Those sadhus who leave Vrindavan to go fight in the world to spread Krishna consciousness are superior sadhus. Unquote. Srila Prabhupada, we pray to remain fixed in the serious practice of expanding the Krishna consciousness movement 
as advised by you. Humans have free will to choose what to do with their lives. Taking one's spiritual life seriously is a choice that is therefore open to each individual. But even for those who do decide to take a serious approach to spiritual life, there are various religions and spiritual causes, as well as leaders, prophets, and incarnations to which one may dedicate one's life. Among these seemingly unlimited choices, Srila Prabhupada, we at ISV very deliberately choose not only to follow you and your teachings, but to also adhere to the tenets of your organization, ISKCON. We do so because your mood and method for approaching the Supreme Personality of Godhead and for going back to Godhead is firmly rooted in seriously following Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, as is ISKCON. At Antilila 4.102 through 3 of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sanatan Goswami tells Haridas Thakur, Some behave very well but do not preach the cult of Krishna consciousness, whereas others preach but do not behave properly. You simultaneously perform both duties in relation to the Holy Name by your personal behavior and by your preaching. Therefore, you are the spiritual master of the entire world for you are the most advanced devotee in the world. Recognizing you as the most advanced devotee in the world, on this day of your Vyasa Puja, we, the members of ISKCON of Silicon Valley, pray that we may follow all your instructions with the utmost seriousness. Your servants at ISKCON of Silicon Valley, Mountain View, California, USA. Everyone who agrees with this, please say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And now we have the uh, Pushpanjali ceremony that Prabhupada taught us. Oh, oh, we have an MSF offering, and then we have Pushpanjali. So what we're going to do now is arrange the, the room in a different way. We'll put away all the seats and chairs. Then we're going to make a, um, an arc around Srila Prabhupada, leaving... Uh, uh, an aisle so that he can have darshan of the deities and then we're going to have our sankirtan leaders offer the msf offering vancha kalpadurubhasya kripa sanabeva cha patitanam pavadibhya vaishnavibhya anantakoti vaishnavindiki jai go premanande